Now before we finish up with chapter 4, let's take a look at just a few more options when working with list views. So I've taken my folder and this will be saved as chapter 4b. And if we go in here, let's take a look at adding thumbnails. This is something that you'll do quite often. So let's steal a thumbnail from my site just for the example. And we'll scroll down and how about this one? This is appropriate. Uh, this is a tutorial on working with object-oriented CSS, and that's appropriate because jQuery Mobile uses a object-oriented CSS framework. This image, and we'll come back and let's add one at the bottom. So just to keep things simple, I'm going to delete a lot here. That way you don't have to take too much in here. So we'll get rid of all of that, and now we're ready to begin. So per usual, we're going to create a list item, but within here, the very first image needs to be your thumbnail. That's the way this works. So even if you were doing an icon rather than a thumbnail, you would still place this at the beginning. So here we're going to do source equals, and then paste that in, and also alt equals CSS, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so if we view that in the browser now, we're going to get, it looks a little bit strange, right? And that's because uh, we also need to add a heading, of course. So mostly it's up to you to determine what headings you want to use. All right, so let's go back. And now if we refresh it, it's getting a little bit different. And let me come back here and just indent this a bit. And we're going to add one more a paragraph tag. And here is a description of my event. Now notice here, notice how the image seems to be uh, overtaking the text. And this is one thing you got to be careful with is jQuery Mobile can sometimes be a bit uh, rigid. You got to know exactly how to code for it. So in this case, even if this doesn't need to be clickable, uh, you need to wrap it within an anchor tag. And this is unfortunate. Maybe they will fix this after the official version is released. But nonetheless, it's something to look out for. So here, let's just take this text and we're going to wrap it in an anchor tag. And again, for now, we'll just link it to nowhere. But now when I come back, that is now fixed. So that's something to keep in mind. However, 99% of the time, I bet you'll find that this will be a clickable link. But now with very little effort, we have this. So if we wanted to add, let's add one more. And just for the sake of expediency, we'll just paste it. Let's do a couple. Okay, and now we have three list items. So I'm going to come back and let's change the data theme to C. Okay, and then I want to change uh, my UL data theme and we'll change this one to C as well. There we go. And I've also decided that for this application, we don't need any filtering. So I'll copy this and delete that. Okay, so now everything's starting to look good. We have images. However, what if we want to use an icon? So if we close out Firefox and we open up our folder, you'll see that I've added a new images folder and I've added a simple icon. Uh, you can barely see it. It's probably not the best choice, but it'll get the idea across. It's just an event icon. So we want to use this in place of the thumbnail. If we go back to MacVim and we're going to come here and for this first one, I'm going to change the source. And we're going to change this to the path, event icon.png, like so. So now, this isn't all we need to do. As you can see right there, it's not quite right. And the reason is because we need to give jQuery Mobile a bit more information. And we can do that by applying a class of UI-LI-icon directly to the image. UI-LI-icon. And now you can see that it's going to style it somewhat differently. So if we come back here, and most of the time, every single item will be an icon, like you can see right here. And there you go. Now we've applied, applied an icon. Now it's probably not the best fit, but you get the idea. And then if we wanted to, again, we can just copy this, paste it in a few times, and now we could have custom icons. Now if you need to apply a, a custom a sprite or something like that, you would need to perhaps apply IDs to these list items and then traditionally using a CSS file, target that sprite and then use background positioning to show what you need to. You can use your existing uh, web skills to handle that. However, let's continue on and what if Rather than an icon, you wanted to apply some additional information, whether it's a comment count or a specific date for our event. So let's try that this time. So I'm going to go back and let's go ahead and grab our object-oriented CSS image just for the example again. And I'm going to create a list item and then an image. And the source is going to be there. And the alt, again, we don't have anything specific. We'll just give it CSS. 
So we have our image, and then what else do we need here? Let's give it uh, a heading three tag with an anchor tag. That directs nowhere. See how much time this saves, by the way, using something like Zen coding or SparkUp. And then the value will be some event time, some event title. And then finally, after the anchor tag, to apply uh, something like a count or a date that should be offset, maybe over to the side, uh, you would use a span element. And within the span element, again, we have to apply a class. So in this case, we would do span class equals UI, LI, and then give it a class name of a side. And that means this information is going to be placed aside. And we'll give it 5.45 p.m., something like that. So. Now we have a list item, we have our image, we have our heading three tag, and it's wrapping our anchor tag as well as a span tag. Notice the span is occurring after the anchor tag, not within it. And we've given the span a class of UI, excuse me, UI LI aside. So let's see what that does for us. Now, this is exactly what it does. Notice how it applies that over to the right. And that's because right here. So let's get rid of that and you can see by default that information will be displayed inline like so of course as a span it will be displayed inline so that's why we need to apply a custom class of UI li aside notice these CSS classes follow a naming convention UI and then list item so here we're saying we're affecting the UI of our page and we're targeting the list item and then we're here we're gonna do an icon here we're doing an aside so if I refresh the page, that's pushed all the way over. So again, here, after our heading three, we could have paragraph, some description about the event. Should go here. And there you go. So with very minimal work, you can create some nice looking layouts. So let's get rid of this, because that doesn't really go. Get rid of that one. And again, we'll duplicate this a couple times. There we have. Now let's create a divider again to go over some information that we've already covered. So list item, there's not gonna be an anchor tag, so all we need to do is apply a custom attribute of data role equals list divider. And we can give it a value, some more event info. And there we go, there's our additional information. Let's just copy this for convenience. Paste it in. And now you can see how little work this requires, especially if you're going to be retrieving it, of course, dynamically from a database. You'll only have to write this code one time, and jQuery Mobile will do the rest. So let's scroll this down, and this is how it would look on a mobile application, where you have your images, your titles, your dates. All right, so that's going to do it for list views. So stay tuned for Chapter 5, where we're going to take things even further.